Next up, let's talk about migrations. And first of all, I have to define what migrations is in that regard, because migrations can be interpreted in many different ways depending on the current context. In our context here, I am specifically talking about our database schema and changes we are trying to do in that database schema. So basically any new tables or table adjustments, column adjustments, etc, etc. So in previous videos, you may have seen that I always used PHP, my admin, and just basically either adjusted the structure manually or created tables manually. But of course, there is a more approachable way and scripted way in CakePHP to do such kind of things. And this is the migrations plugin. So first of all, I wanted to show you that the migrations plugin is default installed inside CakePHP and is also enabled uh, by default, as you can see in the uh, migrations uh, in, inside the application PHP, that whenever we are inside our CLI context, so this only this plugin only gets loaded when the CLI is being executed. Um, that yeah, the migrations plugin is here. Now, okay, what can the migrations plugin do? Uh, if you go into the CakePHP documentation, there is a separate migrations page for that. And yeah, basically what migrations is integrating into CakePHP is yeah the whole functionality to change database schema via such code snippets inside classes. And as well as many other things in CakePHP, you can also, of course, generate these migrations via the bake CLI tool. So bin cake migration is the general um, tool or the general um, command to do such things. And in there we have a bunch of, yeah, let's say options, which we can do, but the most basic example is just providing uh, a name at the end. So let's just say bin cake bake migration test. And now it says here he the, the CLI tool created the file inside our config migrations folder. So now if we go into our config migrations folder, we see basically a empty class or rather empty class with just one method which is the change method. And yeah, so what can we do inside here? Inside here, we can call methods from the migrations plugin or more specifically from the Sphinx library. Um, because as you can see here, this plugin is just a wrapper for the general PHP Sphinx um, database migrations library. And uh, the first typical methods or the first typical uh, yeah function you will going to use is the table method which basically just gives you a table instance for that specific name so here we get the test table instance and um, before i continue um, this table instance is not to be confused with what we have inside cakephp because source model table blog posts table is another class in that in that sense and is not the same as a migrations table. So both are in that sense when we are talking about it's table classes, but table classes inside migrations are different from the cake PHP ORM classes. But yeah, then let's just continue with uh, what we can do with migrations. So when we have a table instance from our table method, we can call methods like add column. Let's just call it a uh, name. It is of a type string and we don't need anything else in behind at the third parameter, anything anymore. Um, and let's just call the create method here now. So basically what we're doing here, we are 
in PHP or in, um, in source code, uh, creating a test table instance. We are adding a column name from the type string and you will see later um, that this can be dependent on the database type. And then we just tell the migrations plugin to create that table for us. So this is basically just a PHP representation, but whenever this is executed, this will then um, create the table for us. So how do we execute that now? Okay, so we had the bake migration before to create our migration file inside of our app, but there is also a migrations um, section so bin cake migrations shows us all the tools and cli methods that are available inside of our migrations plugin and here we can see that we have a migrate method which basically migrates the database to the current changes which are present inside of our code base so we can say bin cake migrations migrate so yeah we have to be aware first is the plugin migrations and second is the command to execute and now we can see okay what what has been done uh, it used the migrations path which he found automatically from the configure mig migrations it used a bunch of your yeah, configurations it found our test um, migration so the test class is here as you can see with the current date and time uh, timestamp in the file name and yeah at the end it just says that everything was successful there were no errors and now if we look back into our database we can see that we have now our test database or our test table uh, with uh, the two columns which are default presence um, our name, which we specifically created, and the ID, which is automatically created, because this is basically what happens inside this, this table um, method call. You can specify uh, if you want to, that there is no auto ID, but yeah, if you want to go deeper in there, just look into the documentation. But yeah, so that's the quick overview of what migrations can do. But I want to go a little bit deeper because the migrations tool also has other um, functionalities as well. If you look into the bin cake migrations status, you can see which migrations have already been run or not um, via the name and if the status is up or down. Um, then uh, another very useful tool is the rollback tool. So the roll, I have to call, call, <laughs> name it correctly. Uh, the rollback tool basically tries to undo the latest migration which we have previously run. So here we have this migration which now has been run. Um, but if we now call rollback, the tool automatically tries to revert these changes in the database. So if you now refresh our page, we can now see that the tests table is now gone and we have no migration done in that regard. Uh, we can also see that when we see, when we check our status, we can see that the test migration is now down. And yeah, that's a very, very useful tool. Now, Okay, I was also very uh, pretty confused at the start when I just saw that there is basically just the change method here and CakeBHP automatically knows what to do and how to do things. Well, you have to be careful here because the change method can only, yeah, automatically revert as much as it can automatically detect. So whenever you are either um moving stuff around in uh, from a data perspective so if you updating data or if you're uh, removing columns which had data inside them this real rollback of course won't um, restore your old data and uh, therefore it's not a perfect backup solution in that regard it's just 
a rollback from a schema perspective. You can easily roll back to an old schema, um, to an old schema state. And yeah, it's pretty handy that this is already um, pre-configured and CakePHP already knows what to do inside the change methods for the most major uh, functionalities you will use for this whole test table. So yeah, there is also, yeah, you can change columns, so you can rename columns. You can, of course, uh, change primary keys. You can add indexes. You can drop foreign keys. You can add constraints, all the, all the typical database um, schema adjustments you want to do here. So if you want to have a more granular control of what is happening when the migration is done or when the migration is rollbacked, you can also use the up and down functions which are present inside uh, the abstract migration or what you can define inside the abstract migration. So basically the up method is being executed whenever you perform the migration that it is up and that it is yeah, uh, done inside our database. And the down method is being called whenever you're rolling back that specific um, migration. You just have to be sure that uh, you have uh, removed or adjusted the change method because you shouldn't have an up and then change uh, function inside your migration. Um, but yeah, that's, I would say, the most basic stuff about migrations. Um, this, of course, uh, is all inside of our source code. So whenever you are trying to migrate stuff over from a local to a live environment or, um, yeah, basically have anything uh, versioned inside Git, you can just create uh, or commit this migration file into Git, um, pull that on the live server, check via the migration status if that migration has already been run on the live server or not, and then you can re-perform this migration. Because in the end, uh, if we go now a little bit deeper, whenever you perform migrations, you also get a things log table inside your database. And inside here, you can also see whenever a uh, migration has been run or not um, just via what is present inside this things log. So basically, this table is responsible of how migrations are being run in your specific environments, either if it's stage, live, test, or whatever. Um, but yeah, uh, the last thing I wanted to show you is in regards to changing data and um, what you can do with the query builder inside the migration. So um, if we go back to here, we can also now, if we go, in, go into the uh, things documentation, so if we go back to the top here, we can see that there is a, uh, no. <laughs> There is a separate things uh, documentation, cake PHP migration. It is also linked inside of the basic migrations um, documentation. You can see here things, then go to the docs in here, and then you are basically at the things documentation page. And in there, we can um, basically go to the writing migrations section and at the very bottom there is the creating an update query. So we can go inside here, copy paste that in here. And as we can see, there is basically a query builder, which is um, yeah, basically very similar or uh, uses the default cake database query builder from CakePHP itself. And you can then say, okay, we want to update our test table. We set the name to some new name where the name is some old name and then execute that. So it's basically just another way how you can write SQL queries in the specific migrations syntax. And uh, this, of course, may be a little bit restricting 
or yeah a little bit uh, confusing how you can do basic sql queries with that and for that you can also execute uh, basically just call the this execute method here as well so this is also very handy whenever you have some very specific database queries you want to execute inside your migrations and yeah just don't have a very nice way of using the query builder or anything else that is provided by the plugin so that you can basically just automatically execute that query just via migrations but yeah i would say that's the most important stuff about migrations i hope you learned something and i will see you in the next one